Yesterday I asked a question on my Facebook page, uh, what would people like me to make a guitar video about? And I think it was Nick said uh, about using compression, uh, uh, the effect it has and um, how you'd use it in live performance. Uh, so I did make a video yesterday, uh, but I didn't set my camera up right, so everything was out of focus. So I'm trying again today. Uh, for this video, I am going to be playing a Telecaster into my Hampstead um, Artist 20. Um, and I'm going to be using a couple of different compressor pedals. But before we get into that, um, this is a very quick uh, kind of overview of, of compression and what it is and, and how it works uh, as it relates to guitars and stomp boxes. So what is compression? If you don't know, um, what a compressor does is uh, it limits the volume of the loudest parts of your playing in layman's terms. So you set what's called the threshold, which is the uh, the level at which you want the compressor to start squashing the sound. Uh, uh, so there's, yeah, the, the parts of compression. Threshold, which is the volume at which it starts working. Um, ratio, which is the amount of compression. Uh, and then you normally have gain makeup as well. Uh, and there's an attack control, which we'll come on to later on some compressors, including some stunt boxes. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you're taking a, a guitar signal, which might have a dynamic range of this much. Dynamic range is the difference between the quietest part and the loudest part of your playing. And the comp what the compressor does is it turns down the loud parts, so your dynamic range is now much smaller, and then it allows you to raise the overall volume of that compressed signal. Why is that useful? It is useful because um, it uh, helps to kind of control your guitar level, I suppose. Um, it helps give you a, uh, a narrower dynamic range, if that's what you're looking for. Um, but quite often with guitars, it's used in, like there's a few common ways that it's used. Some people like to have a compressor at the start of their signal train, you know, plug into it uh, and just have it a little touch of compression over the whole thing, just to even out the guitar sound before it hits anything else. In other styles of music, you might use more heavy compression and we'll, st we'll get onto that. So I'm gonna start now with, um, just kind of just going through what, com you know, various levels of compression and telling you how I might use them. Other people may disagree entirely with me and that's absolutely fine. Um, the compressors I'm going to be using are uh, this little green one. Can you see that? That's a Gaia Tone driving box um, from the 70s, early 70s, I think. But it's a pretty standard circuit. It's it's essentially the same as an MXR Dynacomp or any of those kind of old two knob compressors. Um, it's got one knob labeled output, which controls the amount of output. Not not tricky. Uh, and it's also got a knob called uh, sensitivity, which is the one that controls all of those parts of compression that I spoke about earlier. The more you turn it up, the more it squashes your signal. Uh, I'll show you. So this is a kind of, first of all, this is my clean sound, okay? I'm gonna start with some country stuff, so I'll stay on the bridge pickup of the telly. This is my clean sound. <laughs> Sounds cool to me. A little bit of compression. So you can hear there that just with a little bit, just to take the, 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 the peaks kind of down a bit, um, it makes the whole sound kind of tighter, which is uh, like really useful, particularly if you're playing in a band context sometimes. Um, you can kind of sit there and be a little less uh, you need a little less right hand control, I suppose, because the, com the compressor takes away some of that work. Uh, I'm going to turn the compression up now. So this is kind of still in, in uh, kind of chicken picking territory. Um, if there are any um, Jerry Reed fans in, 
the guitar sound on Amos Moses is a Telecaster with, uh, I believe, a Dynacomp turned all the way up. So this is kind of not all the way up, but about halfway up. So this is that this kind of sounds very compressed, but funky in seventies. <laughs> more compression just to see what it sounds like again it's got it's for me that's a recognizable guitar tone um, from a lot of the music I listen to because I listen to a lot of music from the 70s uh, a lot of which is fairly heavily uh, country influenced if not straight out country um, I like the sound. I don't normally use a compressor these days myself, but it's cool to have it. Um, so that's with extra compression. It, you know, that's fun. That's a fun. That's a fun guitar sound. Um, while we're kind of, I'm gonna dial it back a little bit to about halfway up. So the other, one of the other places where I've used compression is playing kind of funk and disco type stuff. So if I moved in the middle pickup, um, for all that kind of straight 16th stuff, again, this is straight out of the 70s in terms of guitar tone, I would say, but it's this kind of thing. <laughs> Again, it just brings that whole dynamic range down so you can you can kind of chop away as hard as you like and um, if you're playing a kind of James Brown style groove that kind of you know you can do that for 10 minutes and it helps uh, give it that give it that kind of um, spank I guess that you want from a bit more just for fun so <laughs> uh, yeah so like when you're doing all that kind of um dead note stuff where you're basically being um, a glorified tambourine player. It's, it just squishes it and makes you sit, sit right where you want to be. Okay, cool. Uh, one more common knob, uh, common knob, <laughs> one more common use for the two knob compressor. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, at least it kind of used to be a common use. I don't think people do it so much anymore. But when these came out, this was kind of the, 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 the still in the fairly early days of effects pedals. And a lot of people wanted to use pedals to really boost the front end of their amp. Uh, so you could push it into overdrive more. So you can do that if you turn the compression all the way down and the output all the way up. So that's that's with the compressor off. I'll turn it back on. So you can use it uh, as a clean boost as well. That's all my kids jumping around on the trampoline outside, but that's fine. Right, where was I? So this is the Aria ACP-1. Um, it's from the early 80s. It's a three knob compressor. The third knob is um, an attack control. And what attack does in compression is it allows a little bit of the signal through the circuit 
uh, before the compressor kicks in. Um, and I'll show you how that sounds. It's, it's sometimes useful. It means that you can use the compressor kind of with a bit more subtlety sometimes. Um, so you can just use it to kind of extend the length of notes rather than squishing the front of the note. I'll show you what I mean. So if I'm going to turn it on here, this is with the, uh, where are we? So sustain's about halfway up. Um, the attack is completely off at the moment. So this is just going to compress as soon as I play. So you can hear there as I play the chords, you, it kind of ducks the front of the chord and then it slowly releases. If I turn the attack control on now, so I'll turn it about halfway up. I'm going to turn it all the way up actually. So this is the attack all the way up. That's with the attack all the way up, attack all the way off. So yeah, with the attack control, you can kind of turn it into what some people call a sustainer, where you're, it just makes your like notes last longer. So that's what an attack control does, that's useful. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch guitars. So the, the, the next way, I want to talk about how you can use compressors is um, for slide guitar and this particularly uh, relates to Lowell George who was the, the guitar player in, uh, in Little Feet. Uh, one of my favourite slide players, incredible guy. Uh, I'm going to be demoing this on this 20 quid uh, parts caster I got from a charity shop. <laughs> um, whoever put it together didn't cut the nut so it's got a ridiculously high action and outrageously heavy flat wound strings on it and it's tuned down to open C sharp. So this is the guitar with no compression. Just excuse my uh, intonation. <laughs> so the way uh, Lul George did it, and a few other people have done it as well, is um, in the studio he would run his guitar into um, a studio compressor the name of which escapes me, but the classic kind of uh, silver front, one VU meter, two two knobs. It's been emulated and copied of plugins and all sorts. Anyway, he'd run into one of them and then out of that into a second compressor because um, it would compress it and then compress it some more and give virtually kind of infinite sustain almost. So I'm going to show you, uh, so this is one compressor, compression turned all the way up. So this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So you can hear already that it's just, you know, making the those notes go on for ages, which is which is great. If I put the second one on, this is loads of compression now. Too much compression, really. It's worth remembering that whenever you turn the compression up, you're also turning up the noise floor, which is where that hiss is coming from. So this is with a ridiculous amount of compression. <laughs> So you can hear how much it's squashing it uh, and also how much I need to practice playing slide. But uh, let me just play that one note and see how long it'll go for. Yeah, I mean, you can go and have a bite. 
Well, that's on. Turn those off to stop the hissing. Uh, so yeah, so those are some of the ways that you can use compressors in a live situation and uh, what they do. Uh, make sure you uh, subscribe down below, somewhere over there. I can't remember. Is it this side? Might be this side. I'm, I can't remember what the side of the screen is. Hit the button anyway and uh, leave any comments below, anything else you'd like me to look at. Um, I'm sure there are people who are going to correct me about some things I've said in this video and that's fine. Good on them. Um, in the meantime, keep practicing and uh, stay well. And, you know, stay well away from each other. It's important. <laughs>